Good morning, it's Eddie here from Tyneside Life. Here I am, nine o'clock, stood in the city centre of Manchester, in Piccadilly Gardens, by myself, talking to me mobile phone, like a nutter. I must be absolutely mad doing this sometimes. So, uh, yeah, last night uh, was just an incredible event. Newcastle United, of course, beating Man United at Old Trafford, 3-0, and quite comfortably at that. I'm still trying to take it all in. I still can't believe it. I'm still trying to process exactly what happened last night, uh, especially since we put, by and large, a second string team out. It was just an incredible result. I'm going to come back to that in a minute, talk about my thoughts on the match. But first of all, I just wanted to give you an update on uh, Mark and Sean, father and son. Do you remember Mark and Sean? They were arrested at the Etihad. They turned up at the match and they had in their hands flares, pyrotechnics. They were arrested by police and charged with an offence under the Sport and Events Act of 1985 the following morning and bailed pending court, which was on Tuesday, just gone there on the 31st. Anyway, I've been corresponding, keeping in touch with Mark and actually their solicitor, their chosen solicitor, who they get um, free of charge if you're a suspect um, in criminal proceedings. It's called Cash. He's from a firm of solicitors in Newcastle. And leading up to this, I've been corresponding with him as well. And cutting a long story short, he was encouraging Mark and Sean to plead guilty to the offence because he didn't think they had a leg to stand on but then was going to fight their corner to avoid a banning order, which could be anywhere between three and five years. I fiercely disagreed with this um, because of the reasons I've explained in the other video, because as part of the charge is that they were within, um, they could view the event, which clear they couldn't, there's a, dis, a, dis, there's a distinction between viewing the event and the sports stadium. So argue my case with Cash by email, and um, he kind of agrees with us uh, once he's really looked into it. And together we decided to, um, in conjunction with Mark and Sean, to get them to plead not guilty to this because in addition, there is, there is no stated case of somebody being found guilty of this offence from outside a stadium under the particular charge that they've been charged with. So they did, they pleaded not guilty on Tuesday and the court case, the trial, has been adjourned until some date in June. So I just thought to give you a little update and um, we're going to see how that unfolds, but it's going to drag out. But as soon as I know anything, if it's dropped, the case is dropped in the meantime, I'll let you know. Back to the match last night. And of course, if you follow my channel, you will know that I love mixing with the pros and fans. When I go to away matches, I love going to the home-only dedicated pubs to see what life looks like on the other side. Why do I do that? Well because rules are meant to be broken and I believe that you need to push the boundaries in life to find some stimulation and interest. And going to these away pubs, um, I think is a fascinating insight to see how opposing fans go about their business before the match. So Old Trafford last night was no different. So I went to the Trafford pub, just a stone's throw away from the stadium, clearly marked home only, etc. I went up with the door staff and I said, I had my scarf, Newcastle United scarf on, I says, is it OK if I come in? And the doorman says, eh, sorry mate, you can't come in, it's home only. Sorry for the bad uh, accent. And I s introduced myself as I normally do, explained why I was there, that I'd like to come in to film some stuff, blah, blah, blah. Sorry mate, you can't come in, it's home only. Um, and anyway, if you went in, you wouldn't come out looking the way you do now. I says, give our mate, away. I says, look, I'm just going in to do a bit of filming. He says, sorry mate, this is Manchester. I says, well, not the other half of Manchester, where they're perfectly friendly and reasonable. When I went into Mary D's bar to film the first away fan ever to go in their, in their bar with their colours on, etc, etc. But anyway, he wasn't having any of it. So, big down score for the red half of Manchester, and in particular the pub, the Trafford, who were, yeah, quite obstructive, I have to say. Anywho, moving on, the match last night, and I knew beforehand, because I did a video and said that I fully expected to be some sweeping changes for the match last night, like we did against Man City in the third round of the Carabao Cup, for the first half in particular. So I wasn't surprised when the team sheets come out. What I didn't expect was there to be five natural full-backs and no natural centre-forward in our starting eleven, and 
after our first half performance against Man City, which in my opinion was dreadful. And we were heading for an easy defeat until he brought on two or three of the big guns in the second half. It's quite reasonable to come to the kind of opinion that we were probably going to have a bit of a hard time last night when I seen that team sheet. But you live in hope, as I was, and sometimes you can just pull off a shock. And boy, did we pull off a shock. Uh, it didn't start well, of course. Matty Target pulling up with a hamstring, having to come off. But I think that actually was probably a blessing in disguise for Newcastle United, forcing Eddie Howe to make that change to bring on Miggy. And I, th I think that just changed the complexity of that first off. In addition to that, Man United were clearly nervous. Casemiro getting booked, unsettled some nerves. And Hannibal as well, getting booked for that awful challenge on Sean Longstaff. And the even worse one on Emil Kraft when he, he stood on his ankle. How he remained in that game, I have no idea because he should have been off. And I thought, you know, it's just going to be the thing, isn't it? Because later on in the game, Hannibal's going to score the winner or whatever. Uh, didn't happen, of course, but that was shocking why he uh, didn't come off. But of course, um, we went ahead, Livermento stealing the ball in the first half, racing forward, beautiful ball through to Miggy, who slotted in, into the far side of the net. Absolutely ballistic scenes, unbelievable. Then, of course, uh, Lewis Hall, absolutely chuffed a bit for Lewis Hall because in particular against Man City where he come off, I think it was half time, he had a nightmare. So I was a bit concerned for Lewis. Um, but oh, when uh, Harry Maguire headed that ball out in the six yard area, come to Lewis Hall, volleyed on his left foot into the bottom corner. Absolutely amazing. Everything just blew up. Couldn't believe it. I'm really pleased as well because if you watch my video when I was in Milan, I interviewed Lewis's mum outside a bar by the canal. His dad was there as well. Met them both, lovely couple, so I'm chuffed. If you're watching this, chuffed a bit for you, because I know they're the big Newcastle fans as well. From then, it was just all Newcastle, really. It was such a powerful display. Man United just weren't in that first half at all. Um, everybody, to a man, did their jobs with high intensity, with aggression, but with their quality as well to keep hold of the ball and really make nuisance of themselves and there could have been one or two more goals. Uh, second half come and we barely touched the ball for the first 15 minutes of that second half. Man United, clearly Eric Ten Hag, had given the bollock in at half time because they come out in that second half with high intensity and kept the ball really well without really threatening. Then on a break, I think, I think it was Joe Linton who won the ball with a crunching tackle in the middle of the pitch, uh, picked up by Joe Willock who weaved his way to the edge of the box and slotted a beautiful ball into the bottom corner. Absolutely amazing. Nothing more than we deserved. But the rest of the first, second half kind of carried on from that. You know, Man United had a lot of possession without really being threatening. We restricted them to two or three speculative long-range shots, which went flying over the bar. And frustration from the Man United crowd. The, the stadium started to empty. I'm just absolutely thrilled a bit. You just have to be so proud for, for what the club has done, what Eddie Howe has done, the coaching staff, the owners, and Newcastle United, the team, for where we are right now. Because Eddie Howe and the team, you know, we might have a bit of a flat performance now and again, but every week they just continue to surprise us. They surprised me last night, you know, with a second string squad against that Man United side. Top, top marks. Of course now, in the quarterfinals, we've got Chelsea away, I think on December the 18th. So if we're going to get to Wembley in the Carabao Cup final again, we're clearly going to have to do it the hard way. You'd have to say that at home against Man City in the third round, you'd probably say you think we're probably going to get beat. Playing away at Old Trafford with a second string team, you'd have to say, if you're honest, you're probably going to get beat. Uh, going into that match against Chelsea, who are having a really bad time with things at the minute, just the way I'm wired up, I try and maintain a bit of humility and try, just try and dampen my expectations a little bit because Chelsea could be a team as bad as they're playing who could, um, if we're going there, a little bit too cocky, a little bit too much confidence, uh, take wire off the ball, not give them enough respect, they could turn us over. But hopefully Eddie Howe will just get Newcastle in the right mindset for that particular game and head into the semi-finals, I really hope so. Anyway, that's the end of the video. I'm going to pack up get a cup of coffee, put this video together. I hope you've enjoyed the three videos I've put together. They're all completely different. Please check them all out. If you like them, give us a thumbs up.
don't forget to subscribe so you get notifications every time I release a new video. Catch you later.